Welcome to Sports Beat KC, the Kansas City Stars Daily Sports Podcast presented by Big O Tires. It's Thursday, February 20th, and I'm your host, Blair Kirkhoff. Joe Lenardi. If you watch college basketball, you know who Joe is. Coaches and players know Joe as well, trust me. Joe is an NCAA tournament bracket analyst or bracketologist. He's not the first to do what he does, but he is a pioneer in the field and he is the most popular. Joe projects the teams in the field of 68 and their seeding for ESPN. He's done many other things in his life, including working at St. Joseph's University in Philadelphia. But churning out mock brackets on the ESPN website and appearing during the cable network's basketball broadcasts have turned what he does into something of its own sport. Last October, Joe attended Big 12 Basketball Media Days at Sprint Center, and we sat down in the stands to talk about what he does and how he does it. I think you'll enjoy this conversation that occurred with two others. So in addition to Joe's voice and mine, you'll hear Dennis Dodd, a national college sports reporter for CBS Sports and a Kansas Cityan, and David Smale. David's a Kansas City-based author and is working with Lenardi on a book. Before we get started, there's a reference I need to fill you in on. Early on, Joe refers to Greg Shaheen. For 11 years, Greg was an executive vice president for the NCAA. He ran the NCAA tournament and was basically the event's front man. Now he heads a consulting firm in Indianapolis. Okay, that should bring you up to speed. We'll take a break in a few minutes, but we begin our conversation with Joe Lenardi by talking about his role in creating the sport of bracketology. We were creating sunshine on a process that was closed. And frankly, some of those early projections, I look back and I go, man, I was guessing. <laughs> right? Uh, and, and I would say, I mean, this is probably self-serving, but some combination, and I'll give this other individual like 90% of the credit. Like when Greg Shaheen was running the room, okay, he was the smartest guy in the room. He'd still be the smartest guy in the room and should still be in the room, in my opinion, even though we've had vociferous disagreements, Mm -hmm. right? But he understood that more information was better than less information. That's why they started releasing their own RPI. That's why they started doing mock selections. That's why they started doing, you know, chairman press availabilities right. sooner and more frequently. That's a great point. Okay? Yeah. Like, like, whether that was because people like me were already peeling the curtain back, mm-hmm. right? And they were trying to get ahead of it. Or, I think, I think he was just a smart businessman. Yes. Right, like it's, this is not complicated. Overall, it's good PR. Of course it is. Because the only thing better than people loving Selection Sunday is loving the eight Sundays before that when that knucklehead Lenardi puts up a bracket. (laughs) I'm carrying their water, right? (laughs) Right, and you know, to his credit, there was never any, you know, I never got one call one time, you should X or you were wrong. Now you've interviewed him, mm-hmm. and one year there was a committee member, maybe it was him, said, you know, we, we trust Joe because he doesn't have an agenda. Right, right. Like my only agenda was to try to be right. right. And you know, obviously I worked at a member institution, I'm a you know, proud hawk and St. Joe and all, and we've had our moments you know, during the bracketology mm-hmm. year, but I've never misevaluated mm-hmm. St. Joe's. I mean, when you're 27 and 0, it's kind of hard to screw that up. <laughs> but I've never, you know, put us in when we shouldn't mm-hmm. or made us a five when we were a 10. You know, like, yeah. be, be, because there's too much screw. Like, right. some, one of you guys would call me up and say, well, you were. Dick Weiss would go, Joe, come on. Correct. <laughs> I can see Correct. him doing Here, that. Classic story. <laughs> uh, the year of so Villanova won in 16 and 18 right correct so I think in 16 which was a little bit more of a surprise than 18 like 18 they were just the best team yeah right I mean they had they were the two seed in 16 they were two because they beat Kansas was a one and they they beat Kansas in Louisville right but at some point in that bracket season 
I had, I had, they, they were on the one line in a projection. And, and, you know, I was challenged, you know, on the air, you know, oh, that's your Philly bias, right? And I said, that's amusing on many levels. I said, you know, I was born to hate them, right? Like, like, KU Mizzou, like, if you cut me open, nothing blue comes out. <laughs> like, 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 I would rather, you know, put, put my mother-in-law in the bracket than put Villanova on the one line. You know, like, it's crazy how, how people react. Uh, but, but I've come to kind of view myself as just the conduit of their passion. And not to take it personally. Now I'm human. Every once in a while, something will kind of hiss me off, but very rarely. What, what's the most misunderstood? Yes. What's the most misunderstood thing the, the public doesn't know about that? It's the, my opinion, as opposed to me evaluating what they're going to do. Like, and that's really important. And the answer comes out quickly because. A, it needs to be asked, and B, it needs to be understood. Like, but, but ironically, it's the fact that most people think that it is my opinion that creates the, the reaction, right? But, but there's, a, there's a thousand guys on TV giving their opinion, mm-hmm. right? They're not experts in the evaluation process, right? Like, I'm different. You know, you know some things. And, and look, now, but, thanks to Greg Shaheen and the community of... You know, enlightened bracketologists. I said to <laughs> Davey yesterday, like, like in the old days, if you'd have seen the emails that I got, you would go, like, it was like, why, you know, if, if if Kemper was hosting a regional, well, why aren't you putting Kansas there? Like, those were the questions in 1998. Yeah. Yeah. Like now, they're saying. Well, we know it can't be there. The other choices are, I don't know, St. Louis and... Oh, well, no. Oh, my, yeah, right. People are more like educated. Which, way more educated. And I, I, I will take some of the credit for that. In part because of the existence of bracketology, but also because I've probably done 5,000 interviews and explained it to beat guys. Like, when, when, you know, before they could just go on and read my blog. Like, you know, and, and because I was a beat guy, like, I will still take, you know, call from the guy in Tuscaloosa who's, who's got to do a notes piece on an off day. You, you know, know for... The line that, that's going to be in the book with the difference between this is my opinion of who should be in there and this is who I think the committee is putting in. He said... I put my own mother in the NIT if she played a soft schedule. <laughs> right. Now, 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 you know, I miss, on average, like a team and a half a year. Right? And sometimes it's because it gets blurry between what I think and what I think they think. Because, like, you, I'm watching you. I, I'm human. I'm doing, like, I do a seed list Every night, starting November fifth, oh until March fifteenth. Do you have a computer program, or you just? It's a spreadsheet. Yeah, but and you're... there's weighted columns, and then there's an index, and I can, I can, it can rank automatically by the weighted index. But I will now in, on November tenth, I'm probably going to go more by the index. But you know, th- there's the art part of this in addition to the science part of this and 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 that just involves trying to picture yourself in the room like what are they thinking about temple what are they thinking about k-state what are, were they thinking about belmont like last year my miss was belmont and i had tcu in now i would have absolutely taken belmont because i tend to lean more non-major you know, if, if the mid-major is truly accomplished, mm-hmm. truly accomplished. Uh, and, and I thought that they would kind of default to the safe next major in line. 
And I was thrilled to be wrong with that. Uh, and, and I'll remember that next year. Now, they haven't taken a mid, a non-major at the end of the line for quite some time. So... Is that just committee to committee? Yeah. But you, you would track those trends. I would. You'd be the only one that would track those trends. Now, I mean, that may not be a mentally healthy activity either. <laughs> Hey, it's Blair. Hey, we have a special subscription offer for Sportsbeat KC listeners. Unlimited digital access to the Kansas City Stars award-winning sports coverage. Sign up now for one year of Sports Pass for access to all the sports news, features, and columns we have to offer. And it's only $30. That's a 40% savings off our regular rate. For your convenience, your subscription will automatically renew after the initial term at $50, bucks, unless you tell us to cancel. A lot of subscription services won't tell you that. They'll just sneak it on there. We just told you. Your subscription helps support the sports coverage of KansasCity.com and the Kansas City Star. Please visit KansasCity.com slash SportsBeatKC offer to get this special offer. And as always, thanks for listening. We continue our conversation with ESPN bracketologist Joe Lenardi, who is in town in October for Big 12 Media Days. This segment begins with a reference to Jerry. That's Jerry Palm, who is college basketball's other leading voice in bracketology. Jerry works for CBSSports.com and is also their bracket expert for the college football playoff. Jerry's really good. Yeah. Really good. And and I, I, I consider him a friend. I mean, we've been in each other's company a few times. Uh, what do you call uh R- Rothstein brought him to a St. Joe Temple game in Philly once to do cheesesteaks because he wanted to do, a, you know, the big bracket summit. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and, and I think Jerry and a lot of guys like Jerry are probably better at the data and the math. Right? Mm-hmm. What, what, what probably makes he and I different from the others and me to, a, to an extreme is, like... Nobody's calling up those other guys. Usually, you know, for an update 10 minutes after number one loses on a Saturday night exactly. f- for a new bracket on the 11 p.m. Exactly. You know, sports center. Right. And, and I don't they're, say they're that. are doing that to him now because we're all video. Right. You know, we do video. Right. Yeah. Like, I'm not, I'm not saying that yeah. pridefully. I'm, I'm stating it as a fact. fact. Like, th- I think... And I've said this to my bosses in Bristol. I think that I'd probably be more accurate if I did more study and less TV. Right? And, and they very nicely say, we really, really respect your desire to be accurate, but it's great television for, and, and it's perfect content, is king. content, and your content is, you know, People think it's pretty good. Hit send is what they tell you. Right? <laughs> I guess. And, and it's in. That's so, about it is. It's in. <laughs> so, so I've developed ways to try to be as accurate in 10 minutes as I might be in 10 hours because nothing is worse than having to walk something back. Right? I've done it from time to time. Do you get I, – I run into this. Do you get – okay, you'll do something – at 10 o'clock that will live until the morning and people are already and things have changed overnight and people are posting it saying well this is what Joe said he's wrong right you know on or, Twitter or something but they don't right. even understand they don't even don't, well, they don't know I mean what, what, what I have done sometimes from Saturday night to Sunday afternoon is and they actually have this built into the process uh, y- you know they kind of come back and go alright we slept on it what do we think about those points of contention? So I give myself the freedom to sleep on it. But in the last two or three years, I, 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 I've been more locked in on Friday and Saturday because I, I don't like I, I don't I don't like how it feels to make changes. And I don't like the impression mm-hmm. that it gives that maybe uh, there's they're sneaking him information. Right. Or. I mean, I would say if, if that's happened, I haven't used it very well. Because, you know, I could like to go 68 every year. Uh, All right, so let's, let's, 
let, let's disavow that right now. There was no communication. Oh God, no. E- I mean, even I know committee, that. even committee members that I'm friendly with, uh, we we and if we talk during the season, we know to shut it down. Like after March, you know, I've never sent or received a message from a committee member or staff person. Not one time. Wouldn't even know how to do it. Right. They wouldn't be on the committee for long if that. If they caught doing well, they, that. Well, they shouldn't be. Right. They shouldn't be. Let's say, you know, Wichita State in what you was undefeated in 2013. 14. 14. 14. Yeah. Okay. And they got a one seat. Right? And they deserved they were it. They good. Yeah. And, and people bitched. Yeah. Because how could you? Just like St. Joe's got a one seat back in the day. No four. Yep. Right? Like, Jameer, Jameer Nelson. like they were good enough. Okay, and and I think the person that made that happen is actually in the building. It, it, Bob Bowlesby was the chair that year, and and I've spoken to him about it many times. You know, it was between St. Joe's and Oklahoma State for the last one seed. And they played for the region final. And they made Oklahoma State the two, and it was just a question of what color were you wearing in that game. And it must have been a pretty close call because it was a two-point game on a last-second shot. Hell of a game at, at the Meadowlands. Correct. Covered I'd rather not discuss it. <laughs> Because other schools get other chances. No, no, we're not. Right? Right. right. You're right. Uh, e- e- so, you know, the basketball process is obviously more inclusive. And it, it has certainly put too much emphasis on the tournament sure. in terms of the hiring and firing of coaches, sure. right? And, you know, I guess I get a little blame for that. But, uh, you know, in terms of evaluating or predicting into the next season, which is kind of what media days are, mm-hmm. like, I almost always go back, like, I, I'm way more inclined to evaluate, like, four months than four weeks, Right, That's like which is why la- this time last year, I was as convinced as I've ever been convinced that, like in the beginning, who's going to win the national championship? We we all have an opinion, and there's shots in the door. I thought Virginia was a overwhelmingly good choice to win last year because they were better than the team that. The year before was number one overall and won the ACC by four full games. Like, that's a lot. Like, that'd be like winning a division in baseball by what? 20? Yeah. Yeah. Like, like clinching first of September. Yeah. Like, that means you got to drop off a lot. And, yeah, they had an unbelievable egg laid. Yep. Right? Yep. And that made people not pick them. I picked them. So what's the... Uh, what's I don't know who it is this year. What, what, what's the golfing in Ireland story? Oh. Oh, yeah. So I'm, I'm on a golfing trip with my father-in-law and, and some other friends. And I don't know if you guys are golf guys at all. A little bit. Like, I, I'm a little addicted. Oh. A lot addicted. <laughs> uh, Old Head is, you know, a place where, you know, it would be one of those places, like, if it was your last round in your life, you'd... That would be on the Where short list. It? It's in Kinsale, Ireland. Okay. Right on the it's it's just outrageous. As as a as a thing of beauty. And you know, I'm I'm just a bogey golfer. I'm not so like I get on a place like where there's real golfers and it's hard to get a tea time and I'm always like, oh you don't want to be that guy, right? So I slice one. I like slice one to freaking Scott. It was two holes over. <laughs> Right? Good distance. Oh, 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 I clocked it. No no question, I got it. And uh, um, I'm just, I'm just going to run over and get my ball. I'm going to run back. I'm going to take my eight and go to the next hole, right? I don't want to be. Uh, so I, I run through a hole. I t- I'm starting to pick up my ball. And they're like, I hear some guys yell. They're like, Joe. You can play, but you got to move Florida up. <laughs> and I look at these guys coming down the fair, and I'm like, 
Like a lot of words beginning with F that weren't Florida. Like, I'm like, are these guys serious? Like, like number one, I'm in Ireland. Number two, it's May. And number three, who gives a right? Right? And then of course inside we see them after and yeah. we're having a, you know, they, they have some beer in Ireland and that's, you know, we just that, had a... That's when you know how powerful you are. We had a conversation. And I did manage to get it back to my own hole, and I made a seven instead of an eight. That's a so, story. That's pretty All cool. because of the gators. <laughs> That'll do it for today. We hope you enjoyed today's Sports Beat KC, the Kansas City Star's daily sports podcast. If so, leave us a comment or a like where you can. That helps. Thanks to the team that put the show together, Derek Donovan, Savannah Smith, Randy Mason, Beth Welsh, and Chris Fickett. We'll be back on Friday to preview the huge college hoop showdown between top-ranked Baylor and third-ranked Kansas with KU beat writer Jesse Newell. Hope you'll join us.